they will become uh, they will become recipients they will become eligible to claim a share in inheritance so for example if the if the children are not there but the brother is there or the brother is not there but the sister is there then the sister can claim a share or the brother can claim a share but it will not go far beyond these close relatives so you will not reserve a share for distant relatives your uncles uncles or your cousins cousins or or things like that they will never be able to claim a share but in this ayah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has stated in very clear words that men have a share in that which is left by the parents and the close relatives and so do the women have a share in that which is left by the parents and the close relatives the amount of their share the percentage of their share is not described in this ayah but this ayah was the first in in the set of that revelation in which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala eliminated the practice that had been continuing for centuries among arabs and other cultures around the arabian peninsula where women were not given any share in the wealth left behind by her parents or by the close relatives women was simply of no concern and she was not worthy of any share in the wealth left behind by her deceased parents or close relatives she was deprived of all of that she had no share at all and as i mentioned a few stories in our previous session that there was an incident after which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this ayah when a sahabi of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he passed away when he passed away he left one son behind and one daughter behind the daughter and son were both infants and the mother obviously his wife she became widow now he had left behind some wealth and he had also appointed his brothers or the uncles of the children to become the directors of and the caretakers of the wealth that he was leaving behind so they were they became the they they became the wasis they became the instructors or the caretakers so as soon as that happened they jumped and they they took over all the wealth that was left behind and they refused to give any share to the woman because uh, in in that time woman was not given any share and son was deprived because he was too young he was a child he was a baby and they had they have established this principle that inheritance is only for that man who can ride the horse and fight in the battle so the ones who cannot ride the horse and cannot fight in the battle deserves no share so the son was deprived on the basis of this uh this man made principle and the daughter was already refused because she was a girl so none of the immediate family members of this sahabi received any share so the mother she was a wise woman and she became upset she brought this case to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam told her to wait until allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals something in that matter and allah revealed this ayah and as soon as this ayah was revealed rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam called the two brothers and he said do not even go close to the wealth until allah reveals something else where there's spe- something specific is mentioned with regards to the rules of distribution and division 
do not even touch the wealth of these orphans and the widow. It belongs to them. Because Allah has already mentioned that for, for men, there's a share in that which is, left, uh, which is left behind by the parents and the close relatives. And for women, is a share in that which is left behind her parents and her close relatives. Now comes the next ayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also mentioned mimma qalla minhu aw kathur. Regardless of the size of estate or the wealth left behind, whether it's small or large, sometimes the parents may leave only a few hundred dollars behind. So in that few hundred dollars, there, there are shares of these people, the close relatives. And if they, if they leave, you know, uh, large estate behind a lot, uh, lot of wealth still in, the, in that there are shares of these people nasibam mafruda a predetermined portion a predetermined a prefixed share for you know each uh, each of these people who deserve a share Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not describe the amount or the percentage of share in this ayah but it will be it will be mentioned. Now comes the next ayah. Wa ida hadar al qishmata ulul qurba, and when the relatives are present at the time of distribution, wal yatama, and the orphans, wal masakin, and the needy, farzuquhum minhu. So give unto them from this wealth. وَقُولُوا لَهُمْ قَوْلًا مَعْرُوفًا And say to them a kind word. A kind word or, uh, or a beautiful word. So it, this ayah has generated uh, a, a difference of interpretations among the scholars, among the mufassirun. The, fir the first difference of opinion is in regards to the word qisma what does it refer to the literal meaning of qisma is distribution or division when something is being distributed when something is being divided into people it is called qisma so some have or actually most scholars have understood that it refers to the actual distribution when the wealth is being distributed among the shareholders, the ones who deserve a share in that wealth. And some scholars have also interpreted this ayah as al-qisma to be al-wasiyya, the, the testament or the will. So when, let's say for example, uh, you are about to write the will. And in that will obviously you will say, okay, my son will get this much. Uh, obviously it has to be in accordance to the Quran and Sunnah so you will say my son will get this much my daughter will get this much my wife will get this much after my death my father will get this much if he's alive and whatever is left this much should be given in my debts this much should be given to the sadaqah this, this much should be given to the poor people so at the time of writing the will or the testament so what, what would it mean in that sense? This ayah would mean that at the time of writing your will, if the relatives and orphans and the needy appear, they come at that time, they find out somehow, or they are informed somehow, and they show up at that time. So if they show up at that time, then write something for them as well. That when I die, give this much to the orphans, give this much to the, the relatives who do not have a share in, in the uh, in inheritance, and give this much to the needy. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned. But the majority of scholars, they believe that the qisma refers to the actual division and distribution of wealth. So when that is happening, when will that happen? After the death of the person. Once the, if the person is alive, the distribution will never take place. Inheritance or mirath will only take place after the person has died. So once that time has arrived, 
that after the death of the person, the distribution of wealth